good morning. Today is the 23rd. And we're going to start with a daily reflection on the Old Testament. In God I will praise his word. In God I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. Psalm 56, 4. If we trust the Lord, we have nothing to fear. As the psalmist said, the Lord is on my side. I will not fear what man can do unto me. What can man do unto me? That does not mean we will have not have setbacks and sorrows, disappointments and difficulties. We will. But we rise above our trials through our trust in the Lord. We rely on his love and redemption. We put our faith and hope in him. The Lord assured the prophet Joseph while he was held captive in the dark and depressing Liberty Jail, therefore hold on thy way. Thy days are known and thy years shall not be numbered less. Therefore fear not what man can do, for God shall be with you forever and ever. When we fully turn to the Lord, he will not turn away. If we truly put our trust in him, he will comfort and bless us with his enabling power. <sighs> okay, so today is Nehemiah 4 and 5. And from what I can tell in 4, there's a lot of op opposition in rebuilding Jerusalem's walls. From what I can tell, Nehemiah is a king, not a prophet. He's the leader of the Jews right now. Um, and they, yeah. And so Nehemiah has to um, put, he has to arm everybody. Families, anybody who's there trying to rebuild the temple walls, they're all armed. Um, and the work progresses. And then in five, um, many of the Jews are in bondage to other Jews. Um, there's a drought and people had to sell their land. They had to sell their sons, their daughters, just to, just to survive, just to get food or anything at all to survive. And so, and so Nehemiah commands that it's done away. You know, give back the land that was sold to you. Just release your servants. No more servitude. We're going to go back to that. Yeah. So that's where we're at in four and five. Oh. So let's see what it has to say about it. Nehemiah chapter four. The principle of knowledge is the principle of salvation. This principle can be comprehended by the faithful and diligent, and everyone that does not obtain knowledge sufficient to be saved will be condemned. The principle of salvation is given us through the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Salvation is nothing more or less than a triumph over all our enemies and put them under our feet. And when we have power to put all enemies under our feet in this world and all knowledge to triumph over all evil spirits in the world to come, then we are saved, as in the case of Jesus, who was to reign until he had put all enemies under his feet, and the last enemy was death. That's a quote from Joseph Smith. Um, and then it has uh, another thing here about sacrifice. It skips over chapter 5. The story of Nehemiah's leadership in organizing the Israelites to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem, often under threat of attack from enemy forces, roundabout is a reminder of an incident from church history that occurred on Wednesday, January 8, 1834 in Kirtland, Ohio. On that day, guards were placed to protect the Kirtland Temple as a result of persecution by detractors and the threat of violence at the hands of the gathering mob. Some workmen, when seen armed with a hammer in one hand and a rifle in another. Joseph Smith recorded in his journal, On the morning of the 8th of January, about 1 o'clock, 
the inhabitants of Kirtland were alarmed by the firing of about 13 rounds of cannon by the mob on the hill about half a mile northwest of the village. However, with the coming of dawn, it was determined that the temple was not damaged. Of this period, Heber C. Kimball wrote in the Times and Seasons, and we had to guard ourselves night after night, and for weeks were not permitted to take off our clothes, and were obliged to lay with our fire lock, our fire locks, which are also rifles, in our arms. Do we ponder often enough upon these sacrifices and trials of our forebearers, including our ancient brothers and sisters in Old Testament times, and upon their vigilance and endurance in securing for us the blessings that we enjoy so abundantly today, are we prepared to stand up for righteous principles and guard the things of God with our lives as they did? That's an interesting point being made there. Would you go stand outside your temple for weeks on end, not changing your clothes, just standing there, ready to defend it with your life? And do you have an gratitude for those who actually did those things? I don't pray for it. Mm. But I, I should start. Okay, and now I will leave you with a prayer from a diary of prayer. And this one is from Eric Milner White. O Lord, when I awake and day begins, waken me to thy presence. Waken me to thy indwelling, waken me to inward sight of thee, and speech with thee, and strength from thee, that all my earthly walk may waken into song, and my spirit leap up to thee all day, always. O oh my God, all times are thy times, every day, and every day thy day, made lovely only with thy light. Bring us, O Lord, to that blessed eternal day, which thy Son, our Savior, hath won for us, and to the perfect light. All right, that was Nehemiah 4 and 5, and we do 6 and 8 tomorrow. And uh, I love you all. Have a great day. I'll see you later.